with vectors, I mean, notation is really important. You have to sort of know how we write things. And we have something called a position vector. Now, this is going to be defined based on x, y, Cartesian coordinates. So maybe I'll just try to draw some of those. Just wait a second here. Da, 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 da. Here we go. So I'm just trying to draw myself a nice set of x, y axes here. So this right here represents my x axis. This is my y axis. What I'm going to try to do now is draw myself something that goes, you know, this, this zero point right here is often called the origin. So sometimes we call that O for origin, you know, or position zero, zero. I kind of like that the O, it looks like a zero as well. So that reminds me, that's the O, that's the start. Oh, that's a bad joke. Uh, so here we go. We start there. And then what we want to do then is finish somewhere else at some random point. So let's say I pick my point is, oh, I don't know. Or maybe I'll draw it in blue here. Maybe it's here. This right here could be my point. Now my point could finish anywhere. I might label it A. It doesn't matter what you label it. Um, and then maybe that's how I draw my arrow. Maybe I draw my arrow then from this origin all the way out to this end point A here. So this would be how I would draw my arrow here. There we go. So it's something like this. So from 0 to A here, from the origin to A. This right here then might be represented by any letter. Now we can use any letter we want to represent a vector. We can use any letters like R is a common one for like a radius. We sometimes use a V. Remember we always put a little vector sign over it. Or it could be just written really, really bold, like I explained before. But I just think it's hard to draw bold, so I like to put the little arrow. It could be A, it could be B. We could use whatever effing letter you feel like. It doesn't matter. So in this case right here, let's just say I called it R just for fun. It doesn't matter, though. I could call it R here. That's how I define my vector then. So from the origin to this random point A, this would be my vector. Well, then I could define it then as the vector that goes from O to A. So I could actually write that down. I can say O go to A. And we actually then draw a little vector line going like this. That means this is the vector that joins the point O, which is at the origin. And it joins this point A, which has some coordinates. You know, we can find the X coordinates and the Y co coordinates. And the vector that joins them then, we could say, well, it's defined as R in this case, like that. Or sometimes it's drawn as really bold. So sometimes it's drawn, you know, really, really bold R. I just think it's really, really hard to draw something in bold. So I think it's kind of dumb to draw it in bold. I much prefer this way right here. I like this way better. So I like this way. Okay, that's the way I like the best. But you can define it however you want. Now, two vectors are equivalent. We use this word here, equivalency. We say they're equivalent only if they have the same magnitude and the same direction. What I mean by that is this. Let's say I draw myself two different vectors. I'm going to draw it right now. I'm going to attempt to draw it at least. So I'm going to draw myself some sort of vector here. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to attempt to draw this thing right here, say this one. And I'm going to say copy. And now I'm going to say paste. Hopefully I can do this. Go. There, good. So now I have these two vectors. Now we said they're equivalent only if they have the same magnitude. Remember, magnitude means length, doesn't it? So they have to have the same length and they have to point in the same direction. This is the direction that they point. So they have to point in the same direction and be the same length. Now what's kind of fun is you can just pick them up and move them around. So if you take a look, do these really work? Uh, yep, they do. But what if, so these, these two vectors, for example, are equivalent, okay, right? Because they have the same direction that they're pointing. See, they're parallel lines. But also, uh, they have the same length. But what I could do, I could totally screw it up. I could go like this. I could take this vector now and go like this. Are they now equivalent? No because they no longer point the same direction. And in fact, they probably don't have the same length. So now I've made them not equivalent. So I'm just trying to show the difference between those, okay? But I think it's nice to show. So these, these are two equivalent vectors. Now we have something else. We have something called component form. We've been learning about the components of the x, y components, but we can have something, this is how we formally write a vector. We've been building all this up, so now we finally can. We can draw any name for our vector that we feel like. It doesn't matter. 
Now we can do this in 2D, we can do this in 3D, like three dimensions, we can do it in 4D, or any dimensions you want. That's the beauty of this notation. You can go as far as you feel like. So the way we normally write it, we write it like this. Let's say it's R would be some, and we normally write it like this right here, and we'd say x, y. This is something in two dimensions. So this first number would represent the x dimension, and this second one would represent the y. This literally means that. So that means, what I mean by that is this is the x component, that's the y component. So I could actually draw something like this in 2D. Um, for example, here's one that I could actually draw, right? This one right here, if I want to draw A, which is defined as 1, 2, I could actually draw that. Let me try to actually do it here. So I'm going to try to draw this real thing here. So let's see here. First, I've just got to draw myself. Whoops, I didn't want an arrow, did I? Nope. I just wanted a regular line here. I'm just going to try to draw something like this. And I'll do the same thing here. So let's just say I wanted to actually draw these ones. Well, I could draw it as, let's say, uh, this. what this means is start at the x-axis here. Oops, x, y here like this. If I wanted to do this one here, this one means go 1 to the right, because that's that's what it means. It goes one in the x direction. So I mean, start here, go one to the right. Okay, I'm there, yep. And this right here means two, let's see, this is in the y direction, so that must mean up. So it means go one right, go two up, so that means you finish here. That means my vector looks like this. That's what it looks like. This is going from the origin to a, right? So I can say from o to a, let's just say, will be defined as this, in this case, right? From the origin to this point, that's gonna be defined as this. So just trying to make it sort of all the different notation we might use. From the origin to this point A, if I defined this point A, and its coordinates were one comma two, right? This is what it would be. You go to the right by one, up by two. All right, so x equals one, y equals two. These are its actual Cartesian coordinates. Whereas this represents a vector. Now you might think, why in the world did we bother writing something? I mean, I know these coordinates, so this is that vector, clearly. Well, it's not always so clear. That's why it's, it's going to become very important later on to really define these carefully like I have. Let's say we try to draw this one here. This means 3 means 3 to the right. That's a positive value. That means I go 1, 2, 3. But this negative 2 means 2 down. So that means I go down by two. That means I go this way and this way. I finish there. That means I draw mine here like this. This is my point O. This is my point R. I'd probably draw it with a capital. It's often drawn with a capital as the point. That means I can say then that O, R, in other words, the vector joining the origin and this point R, which, by the way, has coordinates 3, comma, negative 2, is written as this vector R, which is defined as 3, negative 2. This is another way to write it. But you can write other component forms. This is only in 2D we've been talking about. You can also draw in three dimensions. So I can call it anything I want. See, it was called A and R. I don't know. Maybe I call it V instead. What if I define this one? I can call it an X, Y, and Z, or as Americans say, Z. So I can make an X, Y, Z coordinates. This might be harder to draw, though. In fact, this is a lot harder to draw. But you can actually draw in 3D. Have you ever tried to do it? It's pretty tough. Uh, oftentimes, you draw it like this. Normally, you draw this. So here is your x-axis. This is your y. And this here is your z. And then let's say you wanted something that was, I don't know, like a 1, 0, 1, let's say. This would mean go one to the right, or one in the x direction, so that means I would go this way, yep, okay. Then I would go in the y direction, because that's the middle one, in the y direction, I don't go any out here, so I don't have to actually go out any, so I just stay here. And then I go up by one in the z direction, so I'd go up by one here, and I would join these two, and I'd say, all right, that's this in 3D. But it turns out it's really tough to draw in three dimensions, right? It's tough to make it look good. Uh, you can draw on all sorts of crazy things like this. But by the way, you don't have to stop there. You can define them any way you want. So you could actually define it as in 4D, right? Just have different letters. So what if I called it W? I don't know. Um, instead of calling it X, Y, Z, because you might not know what to continue with, we often just call them, this is the first one, so we call it W1, W2, W3, W4. This is in 4D, for example. Good luck drawing that. But you can still work with it. The good news is, mathematically speaking, this is easy. 
Actually drawing it geometrically might be really tough, but we don't need to worry about drawings. We can actually just figure it out. And that, I think, is the beauty of this. We can actually do some beautiful things here. And what I like is that with vectors, you can just pick them up. You can pick up vectors and move them around. So I have a great website. If you've never heard of this, you should definitely check it out. It's called PHET. The University of Colorado has these great interactive simulations. And if you do a search here for one of them called Vector Edition, um, that's the one that I'm going to open up here, Vector Edition. These ones look really simplistic, but they're very, very powerful what these things can do for you. So for example, I can just pick up a vector. There we go, I just picked up an arrow. Now I can change its length, I can do whatever I want with it. See, I can move it around, and I can pick up another one, and I can move that one around. And you can do all sorts of fun things with vectors. But the amazing thing about it is, take a look at, actually, let's just uh, throw that one away. Let's just take a look at this particular vector right here. You can see how we've defined it. We've got something called a length we're going to learn later on. We've got something about an angle, and we've got its x and y components. Now, since we've been learning about components, we can see the style that they do it. See, this is like the component. So this is the x component. That's the y component. That's because, check it out. What if I put this right on the x, y axis? See, this is the x component here. This is the y component. What's good about vectors is you can pick them up and move them. In other words, let's say I drew a little vector right. Whoa. Uh, let's say I didn't have this one right here. Let's say I drew this little vector right here. And let's say I drew it to represent this component right here. The reason I'm doing this is because I want to show this component form here. Yeah, there we go. That's this. This was called the Y component before. But what's great about it is that, if I turn it off, you can actually take this piece, you can move it around. Do you notice you pick it up, you don't change its length by moving it around, and you don't change the direction it's pointing. So a vector could actually be anywhere you want. In other words, I can put it here as well. And I can have another vector then, and maybe I try to have that one draw the X component, let's say. Let's say I put it right here, and I put it right here, and I can stretch it. That represents the x component. See, so that means go out to the right and then go up this much. It turns out these are all the same. Like in other words, this one right here, I could pick it up and move it. It's still the x component. I can pick this one up and move it, and it's still the y component. And in fact, if I show the different components, you'll see those. As I move this one around, let me move this one around here. Look what happens. Look at this. Isn't this still the x component? See this piece right here? It's still the same length as this x component that was drawn. See? And this y component, this top piece right here, isn't that still the same as this arrow here? So these are still the same. So what I love about this is that you can pick up any two vectors, or even any one vector, you can pick it up, move it around, and you haven't changed how we define the vector. Because a vector is defined as a length and a direction. As long as you don't change the length, as long as you don't change the direction like I'm about to do, like now I've changed it. But see, I'm changing the length and the direction. But what if I just keep it locked in, I just pick it up and move it, it's still the same vector. I can move it anywhere I want to make my life easier. And we'll see later on that this will become really handy when we want to try to add up vectors. Because later on, if I want to try to add up this vector plus this vector, it might be difficult to see what this plus this is. But we're going to learn that as long as you add up vectors, you can just move them. I can move them and line them up so that they're what's called head to tail. And it turns out that means now I can draw a vector. Actually, I'm showing you already, I'm cheating, showing you how to add up two vectors. It turns out you do start point, you go here, then you go here, then you go here. That means your addition of this vector plus this vector is going to be a vector that goes from the start of the first one to the end of the second one. So for example, I've just cheated. I've just shown you something very advanced, how to add two vectors. There we go. I've just added it from start to finish. Now check it out, what I've just done here, okay? This vector right here that adds up these two, let me show the sum of these two. Let's just see what it looks like. If I ask it to show me the sum, it's this vector. What's this vector? Take a look. Hey, look at that. So do you see how you can still move them around anywhere you want, and the sum is still the same? Because this vector and this vector here added together, head to tail, still gives you this. What's really cool is, check it out, what if I do this first vector, I do this vector first, and then I add this vector, you might think, oh god, I've totally changed it. Nope, if I take a vector to go from here to here, it's still this. See, geometrically, I think this is beautiful, see? It still adds up to the same thing. So no matter where we move these vectors, they still add up to the same thing. So although this looks totally disjointed, see, this right here maybe doesn't look very helpful, 
even like drawn like this, but turns out this is the same thing going on. This vector plus this vector equals that vector. Even though it doesn't look obvious, I think it looks more obvious when you actually add them properly. Whoops, I just changed everything, by the way, because I just changed the length by accident. I meant to drag this vector over. So that's how you can just pick up vectors and move them, and it doesn't change them as long as you haven't changed their direction or their magnitude.